up gamers? I'm Jason. I'm Julie. And today on Dice and Dragons we are going to be reviewing the Umbrella Academy game. This is by Studio 71 Games, published in conjunction with Dark Horse Comics. It is based on the comic book, well, a comic book, I almost say comic book version. There's a Netflix show. There's a lot of Umbrella Academy stuff out there if you're a fan of the series. And the game is designed by Scott Dean. Now I'm going to toss it over to Julie who will tell you more about the game itself. It's a cooperative game that's intended for ages 12 and above. It uh, is intended to, for one to six players. Uh, and the box says it plays in about 40 to, uh, sorry, 20 to 40 minutes. Yes. It's definitely a fast playing game because you're either going to win rather quickly or you're going to lose a lot quicker than that. What are you doing in Umbrella Academy? Well, you're going to be taking on your, the role of your favorite hero. If you do have the deluxe edition or backed it on Kickstarter, you may be able to pick some other characters like mom, some sidekicks, even the family pet. And what you will be, then be doing is taking hero cards and you must then beat the value of the villain cards. So you'll be facing off against a specific number of villains, depends on the amount of players. Now, each villain will tell you how many villain cards that they reveal and you must beat the damage, well, the attack value on those cards or take damage. Now you will be able to also use some special abilities on certain cards for their storyline ability, as well as your hero powers in order to successfully defeat these villains. Once that is done, you're going to be facing a, well, the final apocalypse, which is the reverse side of all the villain cards. They're even stronger, the attack goes beyond what you can beat with a regular card. So you're gonna have to have good cards, good abilities in order to save the world. Did I miss anything, Julie? I think you got it all covered. Yeah, just wanted to make sure that we covered everything in detail. Also, normally I would say you could just skip ahead if you wanted to see the review, because in the video description we do have timestamps for everything, but I highly recommend, especially if you're interested in the game and to help you understand our review, that you take a look at the how to play section so you see at least a little bit as to how the cards come out how you're going to be playing the cards, and what happens during the final battle. Well, you really want to see uh, those first few cards I draw. Yeah, a little bit of behind-the-scenes action there. It's pre-recorded. <laughs> <laughs> so, what time is it now, Julie? It's now time to grab our drinks. Grab our best friend. We're going to take it to the table one more time. One more time, just to refresh our memory on this game before we do the review. Now we're going to take a look at the components for the Umbrella Academy, the game. Now we'll start with the rule book. So we have a nice simple rule book. It's only a couple of pages. There are some updated rules that are available already online as uh, this one is missing a few things. Now we have not played the game with the updated rule book. We used what we got in the game box. So let's go ahead and take a look at the components now. So we have this starting player card. It's double sided just for fun. It's really just so that you know which player you'll be starting with. The Deluxe Edition, which we have, does come with these tokens for the heroes. Unfortunately, as mentioned in the rule book, it actually doesn't explain what to do with them. I believe that they're used just to mark some cards when you're gonna be playing multiple ones, depending if you need to resolve something later on while you're playing the game. Now, we've got the Final Battle card here, which will come into play if you manage to survive the Onslaught of Villains, we have, of course, the life cards for the heroes. Now, we actually have seven of them because we did get the Kickstarter exclusive, uh, deluxe. well, I don't believe it's Kickstarter exclusive, but the deluxe version of the game, which also came with these extra heroes, Inspector Lupo, the Monocle, Mom, Pogo, Abijat, and Dr. Zoo. Other than that, you do have the standard heroes, from the comic book, from the Umbrella Academy. Number five, his special ability is time travel, move any two attack cards already placed. The horror strengths and numbers add two lives to any hero or one life each to two heroes. The rumor, I heard a rumor, tell a villain to die, so you can just get rid of one of the villain attack cards. Space Boy, double shot, you double the hit on any card. The Kraken hits twice, so you can play two cards against the villain. Vanya, who you can only use her ability once after afterwards she's on cooldown for her turn this is the back of a player deck card that's why i wanted to show you her but you get to remove four villain cards but you deal two damage to a hero then we've got seance 
pick a card from the discard pile to use immediately. Now these are the hero attack cards. Now you may get cards that you can use for their attack value or their storyline value. So Lupo restores a hero to, to full health. You can also use them for a heal value instead of the attack value. You may also get really cool ones like this one, Sibling Rivalry. Remove one villain attack card, but you lose a life bar. You can give a life boost to heal another hero. So lots of different uses for these cards while you're playing the game. You even have these ones that will boost the attack value of your hero attack card. Now, why are you doing that? Well, you need to fight off the villain. So these are the villain cards, which are double-sided. As you'll see, they tell you how many cards are gonna come into play. Don't worry, we'll go through that with the setup. Now to play. So some have seven cards, some have eight, nine, and even 10 cards. Now you may notice that some of the villains get repeated with different art. It doesn't really matter. It's just to give you a lot of variety and make the, the game random. So you could actually be fighting multiples of the same villain. Now, when you come to the final battle, you'll be using the other side of the villains with their attack and damage values as so. Now we have the villain attack deck here, which is what you'll be trying to beat with the hero cards. So nine attack and two damage, 10 attack, three damage, seven attack, two damage. Gives you a good idea. As you can see, they're really all the same. They're just attack values and damage values on the cards. Then we have the board, which is comes with the deluxe version. So I'll take a quick look at it now, and then we'll uh, you'll get to see it in full once we actually do the uh, setup and how to play. So it just gives you some spaces for the cards. It's definitely something that isn't necessary per se, because if you don't have them, you can just put them anywhere out on your table. So there you have it. We've gone over the components for the Umbrella Academy, the game. Now keep it right here as I'll be teaching you how to set up and then how to play. Now I'm gonna teach you how to set up the Umbrella Academy, the game. So it's very straightforward. You place the Final Battle Apocalypse card there, you're going to place the villain deck. So what you do is just shuffle up, villain deck, then depending on the number of players, you're going to deal out a specific number of villains. For two to four players, you're going to deal out seven villains. So we'll set up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have our seven villains forming the villain deck. Now you wanna just shuffle up, I've already been shuffling it. Just place it right here, the Villain Attack deck. You'll need the Dysfunctional Family deck. Next, and I know we didn't uh, showcase these on the components, so just to quickly show you what they are, these are negative effects. For example, you can't play your hero powers, add an extra Villain Attack card to the lineup that are going to come into play. So just keep that in mind. These things are nasty, and you'll be revealing them at the start of the turn. That's why you've got a spot for the Dysfunctional Family card. Now you're going to want to place the Hero deck somewhere where it's easy to access. You'll need to take out a Life card for each hero. Now this is a two-player setup that I'm doing, so we're going to be playing as Vanya. Um, we've got some room over here. Place Vanya over here, slide this down, and the rumor in a two player game, each player gets seven cards. So we'll just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These will be the rumors cards. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we've got the cards for Vanya. And there you have it. We are now all set up and ready to go. We just need to decide who is going to start. After that, once you decide who starts, you're just gonna be going clockwise around the table in a two player game while well, you're just alternating. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, in this case, we'll have the rumor start and we're gonna come back with our how to play in just a moment. So now we're gonna teach you how to play the Umbrella Academy, the game. Now the first thing you do every turn is reveal a card from the Dysfunctional Family deck and it's not, not starting well for us. All players lose a life bar. I'm just gonna move their cards for now. It should be good like this. So all players take one damage. We then deal out cards from the villain attack deck. We deal out six cards. One, 
two, three, four, five, and then I need to put a sixth one out. So just to make things a little easier, I'm gonna move this hero deck off camera so we got a little bit more space for the villain cards because I wanna play, play the hero cards below them, probably cover them up a bit just so that you get a good idea as to what we'll be doing. Now, in order to defeat a villain card, there are a few different things that we can do. We can either beat its damage value and 10 attack is the highest card. So playing this, for example, it would be a tie. Ties go to the villain. That's not good enough. You may have to use your special ability, such as the rumors tell a villain to die, which would let us get rid of one of these cards. Don't worry, I'll explain when you can use those abilities. You may also have some cards, and it doesn't look like we have any right now in the rumors hand. Let's take a look at Vanya's hand. You could also use something like a plus 15 hero boost in order to defeat the card. So it's a cooperative game. You'll be communicating. Got a few different options. Well, healing is, is a good option as well. So let's take a look at what we want to do. Ideally, in this situation, you're going to want to play your five because either you'll want to use it for its heal. Now, if you do that, you would then discard the card. We go into a discard pile that I just would have off camera. You've now healed one, Vanya will be playing on the eight. But as we saw, she does have the ability to boost the card. As we're not all that damaged, we're gonna leave that in play right now. So we'll toss go over to Vanya, and we need a nine attack to beat this card. We have it, so we'll play the nine. We then go over to the rumor. Unfortunately, we don't have, well, we do have a nine, so we'll put that into play. So let's back over to Vanya. We have to beat an eight attack. We don't have any way to beat an eight attack, so we will play this, this six, which will let us get the boost and take care of that card. So we go back over to the rumor. We need to play at least an eight. We don't have one, but unfortunately we do have a 10 attack. Then lastly, we go back over to Vanya and oof, we don't have any way to beat this last card. So let's see what we can, uh, what we can do. Well, I want to show you what you would do if you had a storyline card. So for example, you can either play this for the attack or use the storyline ability. Now let's say Vanya had been badly damaged. This is not the first character. You would then discard this card, restore to full health. In any case, she had taken one damage. So we have restored her to full health. Actually, we're not going to do that. We're going to need the rumor's ability. So we'll restore her to full health. So there you go. We've now played our hands of cards. So we now need to then resolve what we're doing. So at this point, we can add plus 15 attack to any card but lose one bar of health. So Vanya will lose her second health. This card will now be discarded, but we then successfully defeat this card and I just like having the discard up there. Now anything that is a clear victory in our case, we'll just discard. So whether it's heroes or villains. So we are left with two villain attack cards and we're taking a total of four damage. Now, if your player ever gets down to here, they're dead, they're out of the game, but the other heroes will continue. So we lost one, we lost two. Now the rumor can use her ability to tell a villain to die. This is the time where you can use your special powers unless you need to play like two villain cards. So you use them whenever makes sense or some clarifications on the back of the rule book. So we use the rumor's ability. We get rid of the nine attack. It doesn't really matter. The importance was getting rid of the two damage. We now each take a damage. One character could take two damage as well, but we'll split it up evenly. This card is now discarded and resolved. This card goes underneath the final battle and it will show up later on meaning that if we successfully defeat all these villains we're gonna have seven villain attack cards which will be the reverse of these cards right here that is now the end of our turn and it, as I've stated before it does not say whether we would discard or do anything with our hands in the current rule book you can feel free to take a look for the one online I'll include a link in the video description down below 
what we always did was just redraw up to our seven cards. So right now I've got one, two, three, four, as well as four. So we're gonna need one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. We got our cards. So we're once again facing the conductor. We're starting around. We reveal the first card. Well, this gives goes on top of the villain deck, meaning this card is now a 20 because it's got a boost of plus 15 to it. So that'll be a little higher than I want. We're going to reveal another six cards. 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and We've got our six cards here. Once again, the rumor starts. And yeah, we're, we're really gonna wanna just use either Vanya's ability or the rumor's ability on that card. So the important thing right now is to heal. We don't necessarily wanna go up to full health. We don't have a great opportunity right now for an eight attack card, so we can put the eight attack card down. We can spend it right away on he heal get the rumor back up to full health. So we have the six attack. Hopefully we've got a nice seven in here. Yeah, so we've got a seven attack and one heal. Back over to the rumor. Yep, 10 attack. Now, interesting enough, uh, 10 attack. I was just taking a look at what we could do if this was sort of different sequence might have been good to play this here so we could take out two cards because it lets you use your hero power twice but don't forget every time you use your hero power you do take damage i know i just did that in the first round i wasn't clear on it, it says in the rule book every time you use your hero power you take one damage in any case it is vatnia's turn she's fairly beat up we could we don't have a lot of great stuff to do but we would like to get a heal out there so we're gonna take the eight attack just spend it to heal two one two we should be up there goes back over to the rumor we unfortunately don't have a 10 attack we're at full health we could use our ability twice, but at this point, Vanya's ability is just stronger. So I'm gonna play the card just to get out of, our, out of our hand. Take a look at what we've got here. And if we're gonna use Vanya's ability, which lets us get rid of four cards, well, let's just give you an example as to what you could do. We could use a life boost if she was damaged. So we could do that and then discard it to heal up to three. That'd be a good choice. Otherwise, we might as well keep it well, we're just going to play the six. So let's go ahead and resolve everything. So no card here. This one straight up resolves. This one resolves. These two cards essentially just get chucked and we're left with four cards left. Now Vanya must deal two damage to one hero. She's going to deal two damage to the rumor. And we'll get rid of all four attack cards but you do have to flip over Vanya as you cannot use her ability in the next turn this goes under the card we'll flip over another dysfunctional family card so it'll be a villain boost of eight and we deal out eight cards so play is going to continue until we get to the end of the game if we happen to survive that long now what we're gonna do now is take a look at what the final battle will look like. So I got five cards, just gonna go up to seven. So we have seven and we've got one, two, three, four, five. Also put Vanya back up to seven. We'll activate Vanya and then we'll, we'll make it a little realistic as then uh, we're fairly beat up. So one, two, three, four, five. Oh great, got all my cards. So if we're doing the final battle, we would then review, play the cards in order of the villains. We would still need to reveal a dysfunctional family card. 
So at this point, we'd have to add three extra villain attack cards to the lineup, meaning we got a lot of cards. And that doesn't work really well on screen, so we'll just draw another one. <laughs> See, this can be a killer in the game. No special powers can be used this turn. Drawing this at this point in the game essentially means the game is over. Because you notice 13, 14, 17, 14, 13, not a single attack card can beat them. You will need to use your special abilities to get rid of all of these cards. If you get a card like Apathy, it can be killer, unless you've got a lot of players and you can somehow soak all of this damage so that one hero will survive. So let's take a look at another one. Add one extra villain attack card to the lineup. It's not ideal, but we'll add one villain attack card and let's do it. So we've got a lot of different things that we need to take care of. So first things first, the rumor will play the six attack card and then use the storyline ability so I can use my powers twice. Now, I will need to heal myself because that will potentially kill me. So we'll have to keep that in mind. We get to the 14 attack. Don't have anything great. I can heal the rumor. However, well, I've got a couple cards to restore some of the full health. So we'll just do that. And it can restore herself to full health. So we're on the 17. Rumor can then restore herself to full health. We're on the 14. I literally have got nothing good to play here. Don't need to heal, so I'll just play this. Well, it's not my turn. <laughs> Oh, so literally at this point with these two characters, you're just going to be playing cards. There's no way that you can defeat them. If you add other heroes that might let you do some cool stuff, you may actually have some better options. But right now we really don't. So I'm just slapping down cards to make sure we win. And now we go to the final resolution. So what do we got to do now? Well, what do we beat? Only this rinky dink attack card here. The rumor can then use your ability twice. So one, two, we can get rid of two cards. I'll just put them off camera. Fan, you can deal two damage to a hero. One, two, let her get rid of one, two, three, four cards. Meaning, at this point, we only need to soak four damage, and we've got six left, so this would be a victory. But as you saw, drawing some cards from the deck, there's very easy ways to lose. Also, we're using what I would say are the strongest heroes to let you clear cards. If we were using some of the other heroes that just let you double you know, double value, or at one point they're able to play two cards, that would have left a ton of cards left alive, meaning we'd probably just get killed from the damage. But there you have it, that's how you play the Umbrella Academy. We went through two rounds as well as an example of the final battle using the Rumor and Vanya. So keep it right here as Julie and I will be coming back at you with our review of the game. So the Umbrella Academy, the game. Well, this is our first review in the new year, our first review on this table, and I've got bad news for all of you out there. We did not enjoy the game. Now, if you did happen to skip ahead and you did not see how the game is played, definitely go back, skim through the how to play, get an idea for yourself. It's going to add a lot of context to what we're going to be saying about it. We'll try to describe it to you, but I think seeing is believing. So Julie, the Umbrella Academy, what did you think of the game? Uh, a long baited pause. Uh, it was supposed to be your Christmas present. I'm, I'm actually I'm, happy it didn't make it under the tree. It right. got here on New Year's Eve. <laughs> I, I was looking, I mean, you'd been talking about the fact that you backed it and that it was coming and it came rather quickly. Yeah, uh, very fast for a Kickstarter. So one of the great things I can say about this, it was about September. It finished backing. We got this in December. Great turnaround time. Uh, I like the, the cards. Card stock was nice. And the comic book art in terms of the production was good. There's some nice tokens, but uh, we'll get into those. 
Yeah, so I'm not, I mean, I don't know a lot about the Umbrella Academy besides watching it on, uh, it's on Netflix, right? Yeah, and you knew it was based on a comic, that's about it. Yeah, uh, so I watched it on Netflix and watched the, and know, knew it was based on a comic, uh, but I thought it could be a cool game, you know, you said it was cards, it was fast, and it was based on, on that, so I thought it could be pretty fun because they have some cool powers, and um, so I mean, what I can say is that... Um, Vanya and um, her, the rumor, the rumor, her sister's powers translate well. I don't think they fully took advantage of the other's powers because, yes, Vanya, you know, spoiler alert, um, is the strongest, um, but they, you know, the other, the others have powers too, and I really don't think that they made them out to be um, quite as strong as they should be. No, and I, I want to just touch on on that point quickly because I do feel like this game was designed and play tested at six players. For example, number five's power, who has the ability to move cards that have already been played, can be very powerful in a six player game where you've got a lot of cards out and you may want to do that. But at lower player counts, the ability is useless. Why am I going to take a damage to do that? Like, there's just some really odd design decisions yeah. so you know you said it came out quickly my first thought was was it not play tested enough oh they they straight up this was not play tested properly at lower player counts because it says it plays at one player it it doesn't play at one player you have villains that have 10 cards and you have seven cards for a solo game so you draw seven cards that leaves three cards that you're going to be taking damage from if those cards aren't really weak, or you're playing the Rumor or Vanya, or you got some really good cards, guess what? You're dead. You haven't even played the game. You just flipped over the first villain, and you are dead. So yes, there was no playtesting done. Well, basically, I mean, the other thing is you only have... Well, you can take four damage. Your fifth damage kills you. Uh, uh, isn't it six? I thought it was six. One, I'm going to cheat on the back of the box. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, sorry. So it's so a six, six damage, damage is kills the one that kills you. Um, so, so that being said, two players, the only way we could win at two players was playing Vanya and the Rumor. Otherwise, we just, we, we couldn't do it. Also, we cheated because there are... Okay, call it house ruled it. We didn't cheat. No, no, we didn't. No, no, well, sorry. As per the game being designed, we cheated. Why did we cheat? Well, there are certain cards, such as the very difficult villains that have 10 cards, as well as some of the uh, dysfunctional family cards that show up that basically meant that we would die instantly. We both had one health. We actually drew a card that said you both lose your last health. That was it. We were dead. The game killed us. It's ridiculously hard. Why we cheated in order to win is because we wanted to see that with the right circumstances and if you get luck lucky, could you win the game with those two characters and two players? And yes, it is possible. So if we had not drawn cards that would have instantly killed us, then yes, that game would have counted as a victory for Well, we were able to win without house ruling it as well. Uh, we were, that was at four players. No, we played at two and were able as well. No, we, we didn't. Just, no, we, just, we didn't. We lost at two because we played again with Space Boy and the Kraken and we were mercilessly defeated by the game on the third villain out of seven. We we played this game several times. I, I luckily it's a quick game. I'll give that to it. Um, we played it four players, um, and that was the one where we legitimately won. And it the game worked as intended. We did get lucky though. We did not draw any of the absolutely terrible cards that can ruin you, such as the apathy dysfunctional family card. Which if that had shown up when we fought the the final battle, we were toast. So, I mean, I. I don't know what else to say. I, I guess I don't like being really, really harsh on a game. Uh, this game just disappointed in the sense that I can see the idea behind how this should play. And, you know, Jason and I talked about this at length. We could fix the game. We could house rule it to fix it, to make it fun. Uh, you know, and I'm not, I don't even want us to go into how to fix it because I think that they need to fix it themselves and I'm sure there are other people that are going to do it for them there are some clear ways that you can fix this game uh, to house rule it to make it more fun to play exactly S simple ideas 
lower player counts, or at least solo, ties go to the hero instead of the villain. That definitely would assist things along very much. The other thing that you need to do, and this is where I get actually irritated because it is just pure laziness on the designer's part. Very simple. You have villains. You either have six cards, up to ten cards. You write a little one to two, three to four, five to six at the bottom of those villain cards so that you make sure that your players are going to have a good experience no matter what player account that they're using. And guess what? You do the same thing for the dysfunctional family cards so you don't have people getting instantly killed or, you know, drawing apathy and being like, well, I need my hero power to win and I'm solo. Oh, guess what? I'm dead. Like, this game does not work as a solo game. This game is the definition of... I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be harsh. This game is trash as solo. Like, I played it twice, tried to play it twice, died within the first round both times. Like, take, if you bought this for solo, don't open it, keep it in sealed package, and sell it. This game, I don't think I would ever touch it again unless we played six players. Four players, it works, but you've got limited selection. We won with four with Vanya and the Rumor, and I honestly don't see many ways to have success without those two characters in the game. Vanya's ability to get rid of four villain cards every two villains is huge, and the Rumor's ability to get rid of one villain card is just gigantic. So when you're playing, you know, against seven villains, that means when you get to the final battle, you're going to have seven villain cards. With the Rumor and Vanya fully prepped, you've got five of them dead on, killed, you're in a good spot. If you don't have them, well, you're going to have to pull out some other tricks where you may or may not survive. And pretty much if you do go into any battle against a villain and you're really weak, unless you have some great strong healing cards, you're probably dead. So, and you could just get killed by this functional family card. So you're just going to flip over a card and be like, well, then you're dead. So I really don't have anything complimentary to say besides the fact that game looks nice. Sorry, it looks nice. Production value is good. But I wish, even, I wish the board was just a little bit wider. If you oh, yeah, have no. 10 villains, then why isn't the board wide enough to get 10 villains on it? Well, thank you for reminding me because that is one of my other complaints. The board was supposed to be rectangular. It is square. We cannot fit all of the villain cards on the deluxe board. The board is useless. It's not as good as a playmat. It's not as good as just having the retail version of the game. We also have these nice deluxe tokens. There are no rules for the tokens. I even looked at the Kickstarter page. There was someone else that got the deluxe version. They even got an updated rule book. And guess what? There's still no rules for the tokens. We figured out that they may be just so you can mark which card belongs to a character. It'll make sense once you play the game. But even at that, I don't know, just buy the retail version. It's cheaper if you really want to check this out. Deluxe version is terrible and a waste of money. I said that the Call to Adventure Stormlight Archive was the worst collector's edition I purchased. No, this is the worst collector's edition I purchased. This is also the worst game that we played on the channel, by far. Hands down. I hated Discover Lands of no uh, Lands Unknown. I'd rather play that than this game. That at least competently executed its design. The design on this is not finished. It is not competently done. This feels like a bad cash grab game based on an IP that it takes you back to, you know, 10, 15 years ago, maybe even further than that. And you know what? The designer was credited with doing those types of games with Hasbro in the past. So you know what? Doesn't surprise me that we get this kind of a game. It is barely even a game. I mean, the concept of comparing cards, seeing a value and deciding which one just clears it, I mean, that's war, essentially. You can play that with a deck of 52 cards, you know, just a standard poker deck. Sorry if I'm the one really bashing on the game. I'm not happy with this. Mainly because it was supposed to I was going to say, don't hold back. <laughs> it was supposed to be her Christmas present. It ended up not being her Christmas present. I think I got her something better. Yay. Happy wife. Happy life. And I just really wanted a good, fun, simple co-op game. I thought it'd be a great start to the year. And instead, we are reviewing what, if this had been the last game we reviewed in 2020, would have made our worst of 2020 list. So a little bit of a preview. We're going to be taking a look objectively at all our scores and having our top five for 2020, bottom five for 2020 coming out sometime this month. Okay. I really have nothing else to say. So Julie, why don't you score the game? I get the feeling you're going to be a lot nicer than this one than I am. Yeah, I've gone back and forth. Uh, 
I this is I'm sorry to say probably a four for me. So this is actually a zero for me. This doesn't even merit a rating. It isn't finished. I don't feel like I should rate it. It's not a complete game. Most of the stuff, there's everything in the deluxe box doesn't work. So no, this is a zero, but because it has nice art and a production value that I still appreciate, even if it isn't very useful, I give it one point for being fast and real, very much on time for a Kickstarter, I give it another point. So I'm gonna give this a two. This is a terrible, terrible game. And if you wanna house rule it and fix it, you can get something that's workable out of it. Part of the reason I think that we're both so harsh on it is that even if everything was working as intended, this isn't anywhere more than a five or a six. It's not a seven, it's not an eight, it's not a nine, it's nowhere near a 10. The game would just be passable at best with a lot of tweaking. But you, know, you know what? Just finish the damn game before you release it next time. It's a family show. Watch your language. I said damn instead of the other word. Yes. <laughs> uh, so on that note, it's time to remind you to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified when we have some new content for you. You can take a look down below in the video description. you find links to all of our social media feeds. So you can take a look at Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, see some pictures of us playing the Umbrella Academy, give you good ideas to what's going to be happening in the game. So I highly recommend that you check it out. Also, if you'd like to support the channel and you're in Canada or the U.S., please take a look as well in the video description. We've got a link to multizone.ca, a great gaming store in Gatineau, Quebec. They do ship all over the place. Use our discount code to get 10% off, and a portion of your purchase will be returned to the channel. So if you want to support us, it's a great way to do it. Then what else is going to be happening, Julie? we got something else popping up. Uh, podcast? Yes, we do have that coming, actually. So you can expect to see us popping up on a new podcast. Now, I don't want to mess up the name here. and It's been kept under wraps. So we'll actually have a link to that down below in the video description as we do talk a little bit about the Umbrella Academy as well. And then popping up in front of us, we're going to have links to our previously released content. So over here, it will be our most recently released video. And Julie, pick a good superhero game so that people can cleanse the awful taste the Umbrella Academy out of their mouth. Oh, how about my one of my uh, one of my favorites? About uh, Marvel Legendary. All right, so we'll take you back to a review and how to play of Marvel Legendary, which is a much better game than this one. Buy that, buy that, not this. This. If I wasn't trying to, you know, maybe do something with this one, I might have just flicked the box across the room. So what I do we know, need to do now? We're gonna grab our drinks, cleanse our palate. Yes, yes, cleanse the awful taste out of my mouth. I'm going to grab my best friend. We now need to remind you that we're going to keep playing games, keep but playing. not this one. Yeah. Hopefully nowhere to go but up from here. Yeah, I mean, first review of 2021, and I got to say, we probably reviewed the worst game we're going to play this year. So, I Knock on wood, I hope so. 